Hello. Today I'm s continuing with the uh, Friday the 13th uh, franchise. Um, this time with part 7, The New Blood. Uh, now I know there are many people uh, who, you know, when watching these films, you know, around this point, they begin to think that this franchise is no longer as good as it used to be. Um, you know, the, one of the new characters, Tina, has like, like telekinetic power, so it's sort of like Carrie. Um, you know, and, you know, she's taken, you know, first the film opens with, uh, Tina running out of the house from her father, who is an alcoholic, and hit, uh, her mother, and then she gets out on a boat, and then she's out on a dock, and she makes the dock collapse, and he dies, he drowns, he's like under the lake. So, uh, she caused that to happen on accident, um, and, you know, she, uh, Obviously, he feels uh, guilty from that. Uh, now, you know, she's been taken uh, back to uh, essentially the lake where this happened, like, you know, like you know, Crystal Lake, <clears throat> uh, with a doctor to help uh, help her with her, essentially, like her powers and everything. But of course, you know the doctor's using this to his own advantage, and uh, yeah, there's another another house nearby, and there's a uh, various teenagers over there, of, of course, and uh, yeah, um, and then Tina uh, is the reason Jason returns from the dead. You know, like she. Seems to want her father back, but uh, she manages to get Jason Voorhees uh, back, who's still at the very bottom of the lake from the last film. Uh, so, yeah. That's essentially the premise. Uh, of course, people get killed, um, obviously, and... Uh, this marks the first time Kane Hodder uh, plays Jason, uh, Jason Voorhees. A lot of people consider him to be the best Jason ever. Uh, not just due to the fact that he was in four films and really like nobody else was Jason in more than one. I mean, there are flashbacks, but, you know, that doesn't totally count. There are flashbacks in this film, too. But, you know, uh, like part of some of the previous parts, such as four and, of course, six. But, um, yeah, uh, Kane Hodder makes his debut, and, you know, he does a great job. He does his own thing. He doesn't try to copy uh, some of the other Jasons, which is, I think, good. Though, for some, that's a bit disappointing. He doesn't try to take, perhaps, any traits of the others. But, you know, playing a character like Jason Voorhees, where up to this point, it's just been every uh, every film, you get a new uh, you get a new actor to play the part, so, you know, why not just uh, do your own thing? You know, I'm sure Kane didn't expect to uh, be uh, playing the character three more times after seven. And as I mentioned last time, the studio wanted C.J. Graham to return, um, but John Carl Beekler, uh, the director of this film, uh, had worked on him, worked with Kane on another film. He did, uh, I believe, that was Shocker. Look that up real quick. I believe that it was the film, and he plays a character with, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, with like worms and stuff in his mouth. All the stuff. <laughs> Reanimator, but you know, no, it's not the film. Um, though the director is also a special effects, like makeup artist, so you know, he was uh, able to do some of the effects and makeup on top of directing, so you know, I'm sure that also sort of saved some money. Um, the director, unfortunately, passed away. Uh, prostate cancer. There's a good GoFundMe to help pay for the medical expenses that people donated to, but unfortunately, he passed away. Um, no, Shocker was another movie. Yeah, I don't know why Shocker just came to my mind. It was mausoleum might have been the thing, but anyway, you know, I don't know why Shocker was the film that came to mind. I believe it was mausoleum or something. I can't recall exactly where in the, you know, in the special features and stuff. And of course, how I've been watching all these movies, certain things sort of run together, and you, you know, it's I try to think of something regarding a different movie when you're doing stuff like that, it's sort of a bit difficult to do at times, but, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, he, he, John Carl Bickler worked with Kane Hodder before, liked him, you know, he's a stunt guy, uh, and so, him being a stunt man means that, you know, they could have him basically do his own stunts, um, one of the things was he was set, uh, Jason was set on fire in this film, and if people know about Kane Hodder, they know that uh, he actually uh, had his whole body burnt, and some of the scarring still is there to this day. Yeah, like he has, he's healed since then, but you know he, like at conventions, sometimes he wears gloves, especially since you know there are kids who go to these conventions that love horror films. Because their parents, uh, you know, they uh, watch them with them. Because uh, that's not, like a big thing with them. They love horror movies. And they want to share their love of uh, these films with their kids. And, you know, and, you know, parents can do that. Parents, you know, if they think their kids can handle it. And they're watching them with them. You know, that's fine. Um, so, you know... Well, you know, Kane Hunter might like scaring people in movies and stuff. Like, when it comes to, like, kids, you know, he might not want... You know, if they come up to him, like, to sign an autograph or have a picture, he, sometimes he has, like, gloves, so... No, they don't they see his hands or anything, and they're like, oh, like, kind of... Like, too scared or anything to uh, come up to him. Um, much other things, but, you know... Uh, it's kind of a big thing, like uh, he had a accident that happened way back when with fire. He was doing a stunt that he did many times before, just something went wrong, and then so when it came to this film, and you know, some people were like, you know, perhaps this, he might want to have a stunt guy, you know, because he could potentially be burnt again. Um, but he did it, and uh safety was always a concern with th these movies especially with stuff like that where somebody is being lit on fire you know you definitely want whoever is lit on fire stuntman or in this case stuntman and actor uh want them to be safe and everybody to be safe uh and everything was fine and they also even collapsed a roof on him when he gets out and, like the roof of the porch falls on top of him Kane Hodder's just an incredible guy. Now, I've mentioned um, before that I, for me, Ted White is my favorite Jason. 
and that is true. Kane Hodder is second, in my opinion. But again, as I've said, I love all the various uh, actors who have played Jason Voorhees. Um, I know Ari Lehman just, you know, was a kid in the first film, only had like a few scenes, didn't have a whole lot to do uh, as Jason compared to, you know, the following films. But, you know, he does a fine job. Um, and with this film, I think the... It's interesting with the uh, sort of like carried type angle. I know people dislike that in a way because of because of that. Um, and I get that. I can understand. But I find it interesting personally. And then um, how, uh, you know, all these guys are going to help celebrate um, someone's birthday, but then Jason comes and kills every, basically kills everyone, except for Tina and um, uh, the guy, I mean, guy, oh, what's his name? Nick Rogers, yeah, Nicholas Rogers. Um, and, uh, you know, the various people are, uh, dispatched, those who are deserving, because they're just, you know, that kind of, they're, they're those kind of people, you know, they're not good. And I think, in a way, this film really starts to head towards, like, sort of stereotypical characters, like, we got the shy girl, the... One that's the girl is like a slut, the nerdy guy, the uh, girl who is just, just so, you know, she's just so terrible that you just want her to die. And then, obviously she does, but all these characters die. And you could say in the other films, they had characters like those and perhaps others like stoners and stuff, um, which they did, but, you know, and perhaps like in those other sequels, films, previous films, uh, they handle those characters better than perhaps in this film, which I will say, yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to try to defend all the sort of stereotypical, uh, characters types in this film but i don't know just the way this film goes and just the way everything by the end of the movie turns out it's just so just so interesting and uh you know of course by the end of the film jason is back in the lake <laughs> so the next film you know it's where jason is it seems like he gets to be in the lake quite a bit and uh, in, the, in the, these last few movies I've talked about here uh, ends up in the lake in six and, and same in seven uh, though uh, Tina's dad comes back from the dead and brings Jason back down into the lake and that's so the end of that uh, a big spoiler for that for all those who haven't seen the film which is fine but Again, this whole series of me talking about these movies is going to be full of spoilers, even though I didn't say that or initially. Uh, I guess I thought that it would be sort of implied. You know, talking about various plot points. And, yeah, and the Doctor is a real, real jerk also. Uh, gets Tina's mom killed, uses her as a human shield, and... Jason stabs her with, like, some hockey stick with a blade or whatever on it. And then Jason, after a while, all of a sudden comes back and after the doctor, and he's got, like, this weed whacker, but with a, a saw blade on it, which is very odd and interesting all at once. And then he's killed, and then you... 
don't really see anything, and then he's dead. Which, of course, for that character in particular, that's a big disappointment. One thing about this film is the, the, the ratings board really had it out for this franchise by this point. And so for the various bloody, gory scenes, so much has been axed and gotten rid of, unfortunately. Uh, so much so that, you know, people heard about this and they're like, could there be ever one day a director's cut or uncut version of Friday the 13th Part 7? The answer is no. Because uh, the footage that exists that you can see it is just so... You know, there's a lot of scratches and sort of like jumps and everything. It's like so much that has been, they've been able to clean up. There's still quite a bit of the footage isn't the greatest. And it's like to try and insert that into the film, which the way it is now has been, looks as great as it, you know, can be. Um, it's a real shame that, uh, so many studios with vaults and stuff, like with cut footage and stuff, and things for when it comes to like a restoration of films for later on for like home video. It turns out like the film canisters and where they were set, put in didn't have, were taken care of the best, especially with Friday the Thirteenth. Paramount really didn't really care about this franchise. They as I mentioned before, looked down on it. They thought, you know, we've made best picture winning films and yet now we're quite popular because of this slasher franchise we have. And it's like, like they like the money that it made, but not the sort of reputation that came with it of sorts. It's like, well, you know, Probably should have thought of that before green lighting the various sequels that have uh, came out after the first film. Uh, this, uh, yeah, the, the, the there are you can see the deleted scenes here, but again, they're uh, in particular they're called slash slash scenes, haha. -ha. But really, because of just how things were handled, a lot of the kills and stuff that you see in extended cut, it's just very, it's not the greatest um, of quality. So to whoever have a version where you see all the extended kills and the blood and guts and all that, yeah, it's likely never going to happen. This also has uh, Kane Hodder's uh, favorite kill as Jason that he ever did, which would happen in another film, um, where he grabs a woman in a sleeping bag. You know, she's out in a tent and waiting for her boyfriend. They're already, but he's already dead, and so he cuts through the tent, grabs her, and she's in the, you know, the sleeping bag and. He just drags her and he just picks it up and then slams it against the tree and she's dead. There's a lot of blood and everything. Originally did that like many times. It was supposed to be like, supposed to hit like three to five times was supposed to be how much. But, you know, of course there's so much blood because they had a lot of, like, a lot of fake blood and everything. So every time he would hit it, there's bloodier and bloodier and uh, they edited it to where it's just this big one uh, massive uh, swing and smash it, smack it against the tree and then he drops him and you just see her body you know dead which actually kind of is a bit more impactful and sort of just demonstrates just how strong Jason is and um as before the others, 
like on the inside. But, you know, like last time, there is no alternate cover. Like with the posters, but there is this. Um, and if you've uh, ever seen and or played the NES uh, uh, Friday the 13th game, I don't own it, but I have seen footage. I've seen the cover of the car cartridge and uh, the box, and this is the image of Jason on there. Part 7, because uh, that was the newest uh, film, I believe, that was out. They could have used for a new picture with Jason, so they went with that. And the disc is like the poster as the cover, so yeah. Uh, this is a film that maybe divisive of sorts with fans. There aren't too many people who rank it quite high. Um, I don't totally know exactly where I rank it exactly, but it's not low on the list for me. Um, might be somewhere in the middle, but I really love this film because I, I find it enjoyable. may not be as excellent like the first four or so, but it's still a very solid movie, I think. Um, quite different. Um, I'm always entertained, and you know, I think that uh, you know, every time I watch, it, I'm entertained. I think if that's a if the movie is able to do that for you, then you know, it's good to a degree. You know, whether it's good in a so bad it's good kind of way, you know. Hey, that's great. I don't think uh, that is the case here for me, but I do enjoy it. I think it's a fine movie. Um, may not be the anywhere near the top, um, but it's a fine movie. Uh, I enjoy it. I always enjoy uh, rewatching it. I don't skip it if I have a marathon. You know, it's not one that I'm like, oh, no, it's this one. <laughs> Let's just get it over with. I'm kind of like, oh, cool. You get to see Kane Hodder's first appearance as Jason. Sort of a telekinetic uh, character like Carrie. Some cool and interesting kills happen in this film. Yeah, you have some sort of stereotypical characters, some nerdy characters, burnouts, and so on. But... You know, then again, seventh film, you, I can see how it might be hard to have characters outside of Jason Voorhees and the principal characters, like the supporting characters who are going to be there and then get killed off. I can see how for those it would be a bit hard to keep them as interesting as possible. Um... But I do have a fun, uh, I always have a fun time watching this film. Um, again, not my favorite, but uh, not, no, not at the bottom of the list for me. Um, yeah, an interesting film for sure. Um, yeah, quite fun. Um, it's just a shame that the ratings board uh, cut out so much of the kills when it came to the blood and stuff like you want to see certain characters die in a gruesome way and you're denying that because the ratings board thought that's just too much and they never really tell you tell the directors what to cut out because like they're not a censorship or anything of that nature and I remember there was like some like documentary or a clip of a documentary where like it comes like horror movies, you know they won't tell they they act like they're not a censorship or anything like that. It's just a bunch of people who come in and watch movies and then judge the movies and see what is too much or not and what the rating of a movie should be. And if for this, if it at that time, if it was too extreme and they wanted to release it as is, it would be rated X. And they want an R rating so it can be 
shown uh, not only nationally, but worldwide. Um, and I remember there was somebody who said, you know, you know, they were like, you know, we can't tell you what to cut out because, you know, that's not our job. But you can't show somebody getting disemboweled with a chainsaw uh, uh, to an audience. Basically, it was the summarization of somebody's experience. That doesn't really happen in this movie. No, no I guess you could argue with what happens to the doctor, though that's not a chainsaw. Uh, but anyway, you know, that's sort of like the mindset of the MPAA uh, back then. And I guess in certain cases now. Uh, though now with horror movies you are able to show more. Some graphic violence, like some more blood and some more gore. So a film like this, if you had uh, all the blood and all the gore and stuff, could possibly get a R rating. Uh, in all honesty. Maybe some few seconds here and there had to be cut, but nothing too much, uh, I wouldn't say. But, yeah. Um, that's really uh, that's really all I have to say with this film. I enjoy it. Um, what do you think? Do you enjoy this movie? Do you dislike this movie? Is it somewhere in the middle for you? Um, if you want, you can let me know. In the comments or not <laughs> it's up to you uh, I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend and a great week I'll see you all next time